Now we can also have, we can also use these unidirectional flow restrictors to create what's called time delay. I had mentioned that in the previous video, right? So time delay is different from speed control. Speed control is where we're controlling how quickly the cylinder moves. Time delay is where we define a period of time in between somebody actuating a valve and then something else happening, right? We use unidirectional flow restrictors to do this as well. And it's, I suppose, kind of relatively simplistic. So if we've got, um, if we've got a, a 3-2 valve, I normally pause it when I do the drawing, but I just want you to see it drawing again. We get a 3 2 valve and a single acting cylinder. And we connect them up to each other. We could have the scenario where we don't necessarily want the double acting cylinder, the single acting cylinder, to outstroke immediately. There's lots of potential um, scenarios where when the signal comes in, we want to wait a wee second before anything happens. You know, like time delay in closing a door. You know, so when someone is detected having walked through a door, you don't immediately want to close the door. You want to wait a wee second, give them time to clear um, the doorway before the door closes. So, I mean, there's one just off the top of my head. Be all sorts of, um, be all sorts of possible uh, scenarios. Like, for instance, in clamping, if you use pneumatics, this is something that does happen where they use pneumatics to, and you'll see them in, if you've ever kind of wandered around Ikea, you might have seen pneumatics being used to test the furniture. So, like, they'd have, like, a seat and a, a cylinder that pushes down on the seat to simulate someone sitting in it and then the cylinder releases to simulate the person standing up again and what happens is they try to make it more realistic by having it go down and stay there and then go back up where does that pause come from how does the cylinder not stay for a wee while before coming back out again that's time delay so how do we achieve time delay time delay is all about you remember we talked about the flow restrictor um back in, in this slide in the previous presentation talked about the flow restrictor meaning that it takes time for this side to get up to pressure so it's exactly the same deal um, it's just about making it take more time so if we just put a flow restrictor there pointing at the cylinder then that means that when the solenoid actuates and the main air comes through here it will take a period of time before this side the pressure on this side builds enough to move the cylinder. Okay, bear in mind as much as this might be 0 0.3 newtons per millimeter squared of pressure, it could be that that cylinder only needs 0 0.07 newtons per millimeter squared in order to move. You know, it doesn't have to get to full pressure for it to move. So if we introduce a flow restrictor in there, it just means it takes more time before this side gets to the pressure that re that would result in the cylinder moving. What we would find in this scenario, however, is that that would still happen pretty quickly. Even if we tighten the restrictor down really, really tight, what you actually find is, see with these brass restrictors, you find that um, if you, you should loosen them all the way off before you use them, right? And then build your circuit. And then slowly increase the amount of turns on this to increase the amount of restriction and what you find is that if you turn it a quarter turn a half turn or whatever nothing happens for a long time you turn that a lot and nothing happens and then <laughs> it gets to the point where suddenly it's giving you restriction and even the slightest turn in the screw gives you massive amounts of flow restriction so they're quite difficult to use in that respect if you don't know if you haven't used them it's just experiential so what would happen here is even with quite a lot of restriction, that cylinder would move relatively. You'd find it difficult to get a measurable time delay. You'd find it difficult to get like a three second time delay in there. Um, so what we need to do is increase the volume of that hose. Now we could do that, and I've done this in class before, 
when you buy holes you buy it in like a 50 meter reel so I've done it before where I've taken the 50 meter reel and attached it <laughs> and you've got like a 50 meter reel of hose and then in there yeah so inside the hose the, ho the hose is just a void cylinder yeah if you were to cut through the hose that's what you would see so you know what i mean it's just a, a cylinder a cylindrical void inside the hose so by putting that huge big roller hose in there all i've done is increase the volume so that reduced flow rate is going to have a much harder job of increasing that massive volume up to pressure and that's essentially what we do but we don't use reels of hoses we use a new device um, and it's a it's like a passive device it's a dumb device and it's called a reservoir and all it is is a big empty tank all right so it's got a port connection on the top and it's just a big bottle big metal bottle big empty void inside there there's a real one here i'm not going to show you a close-up of this because there's nothing to it it's just a, a port on the top and a big metal so i've got plastic ones in the school as well but I prefer to use the metal ones. And they're just about increasing the volume. So a time delay circuit looks like a flow restrictor with a T piece coming down onto a reservoir. And that's a symbol for a reservoir. Pretty easy. So the only thing you need to remember about this is about the time delay circuit is that time delay uses, so this is all about time delay. Let's give this a wee heading. Time delay uses two components. It uses, I'm going to just do a wee dotted box around this. This is your time delay components here. It's our time delay circuit. So it uses a unidirectional flow restrictor. Again, you would write the whole, the whole name. It uses a reservoir. French word. It also uses a T piece, but for some reason we never talk about that as one of the parts, right? And the unidirectional flow restrictor. So the UDFR is first and is pointing at the reservoir. That's the simple rule UDR first pointing at a reservoir. If you put this the wrong way around and the restrictor pointing this way, then you'll get full flow through here and the reservoir will fill up almost immediately and you know, you'll get no restriction. But then when you, the solenoid deactivates and the spring tries to push um, the cylinder back, you'll be forcing the exhaust air through the restrictor. So it will be a speed controlled in-stroke if you accidentally put that the wrong way around. But these two together give you time delay. So basically what would happen here is, the solenoid would actuate, mania would come through, restricted, it would take a long period of time to increase the pressure on this side of the unidirectional flow restrictor before this guy outstroked. But when the pressure got to whatever its minimum requirement was, this guy would outstroke at full speed. Okay, you should always remember that. This is not speed control. This is um, time delay, particularly if this um, time delay circuit was feeding a 5-2 valve which was on a double acting cylinder but we'll get that in a little second in fact that will be not, you know, within the two or three examples that I ask you to do so let me make up some questions on this remember the, the purpose of this is to get you to talk about time delay and use the time delay circuits in theory but I will put other things in as well from the previous uh, from the previous exercises so try to keep up and watch out for the stuff that's there Okay, so there's your three questions there then. So which components are required for time delay? Draw out a time delay circuit indicating which side is input and which side is output. Now bear in mind that's just, there's no valves in that, only the time delay components. And then the last one, create a parcel list and explain the operation of these two circuits, circuit A and circuit B. Circuit B has errors in it, okay? So, all the best.